All right, good evening. Welcome to News 360. My name is Solis Rosquati. And I'm Issa Moni. We are glad that you are with us tonight. Let's go through the headlines in a moment. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... And workers of Electricity Company of Ghana reassured they won't lose their jobs under concession agreement. Now tonight we also ask what happened to our paperless parliament. Forestry Commission to digitize operations for efficiency. Cocoa Board urged to institute measures to improve land tenure system to favor cocoa production. And Democratic Republic of Congo to increase taxes on mining firms and increase government royalties. Well, all these and more coming up in the next 60 minutes, including sports and entertainment. Right, let's start off from Parliament. And each desk in the chamber was fitted with d digitized tablets to enable MPs access information by the click of a button. Four years on, majority of them are yet to appreciate the new system, defeating the purpose of the Paperless Chamber Initiative. Evelyn Tingma has more. The computer consoles on your tables have been installed with legislative software. That an orientation program be conducted to introduce and train members on the use of these new electronic gadgets starting today after the sitting of the House. That was former Speaker of Parliament Edward Do Ajaho on the 4th of November 2014 under the 6th Parliament. Members of Parliament had resumed sitting to a more luxurious chamber with a state of the art furniture and equipment. Sophisticated devices were fitted on tablets of MPs to enable the legislators access online information and parliamentary documents with the press of just a button. Copies of the daily order paper, votes and proceedings, reports of committees, the constitution, the standing orders of parliament and other documents were to be imputed into the tablets for easy access by MPs. In fact, the plan was to make parliament chamber a paperless one. At the time, some MPs struggled to make use of the new digitized text installed in the chamber. On and off, and uh, I think next time they should try and have us come and test it so that uh, my system is complete. I agree with you. The statement itself is difficult to get. There's only one thing. But I guess it will, it will take time. Change comes hard, so it will take a bit of time for us to adapt to the new way of doing things. But I have no doubt that by the end of this week, will be more adept at using our computers. Four years after the installation, hard copies of documents are still being printed, rendering the devices white elephants. I hold in my hand the order paper as well as the vote and proceeding paper. These papers are printed every blessed day for the 275 members of parliament. Some staff of parliament as well as the press corps one would argue that if the paperless chamber initiative was working, it would have helped to solve the printing cost of these papers. But Majority Leader Osei Chairman Sabonsu says MPs would have to be trained on the use of the devices. Four years, we are off. You bring another, another, another crop. You will never be able to develop the way you intend to develop. So if we are continued with them, those of them who were there, and um, maybe about 80%, uh, 90% had been retained, would have been much easier. Today, 50% is gone. So we must start from, from the scratch, more or less. He says the challenge is affecting some parliamentary duties. The constitution is there, and yet they are not able to assess it. Now, what we want to do 
is whatever bill that we have passed, factor it into it so that it becomes easy to reference it. That anything going wrong, you reference it. But we are not doing that. We are not doing that. And that's what I'm saying to us. That's important that we, we endeavor to retain as many as possible in the chamber. Muntaka Mohammed Mubarak is minority chief whip. The gather that we have, if you look at its position, it was after it was fixed that we realized that if you want to use it, you always have to stretch your neck. So some little difficulty is there. Let's get everybody a tab. All documents are sent to you. So you come, you are holding it. When you finish, take it. After four years, take it home. And other people come, it will still be cheaper for the house than to continue to use the paper. He would not agree that some MPs are not IT savvy. Before the end of this, the, 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 the last parliament, we had come to a point where other paper and vote and proceedings were not printed. Mm -hmm. Or you only print limited copy for those who may not be able to really assess it. Today, we are back to full paper. So even the little progress that we made the last time, all of it is lost. But I think that, look, it is time for us to take a very bold decision. Encourage each other to use this, and I think it is most convenient. I keep telling members, what is in front of us is just like a, a smartphone. You just navigate, the icons are there. You will see, oh, this one is talking about other paper. This one is talking about voting position. This one is talking about uh, papers. This one is talking about reports. So it is there, and it is soft touch. You touch it there like you are touching your phone. Sometimes I wonder what training are people talking about? But what would the MPs themselves say? The way in which we should be using it and be able to access information, go on the net easily and all that, I don't think it's really working. We really are not fully using it the way we were informed about. The reason why I don't use it is that uh, I have uh, a laptop, which I use. At times I can access. Um, any information on my phone and also uh, I have my standing orders, the hard copy with me, I have my constitution, the hard copy with me. So I am more interested in going the hard copy way. Obviously, the vision of Parliament's chamber becoming a paperless one is long overdue. Hope the machines are put to use anytime soon. Evelyn Tankma, TV3 News. Parliament House, Accra. Very interesting story. I wonder how many people were actually giving tutorials to use their mobile phones. Let's now move on to some other story. President Ekufado has renewed Ghana's commitment to focusing on developing opportunities in the renewable energy sector to reduce the dependency on the use of fossil fuel. Speaking at the Maiden Founders Conference of the International Solar Alliance in Delhi, India, President Kufado promised Ghana will embrace solar technology to enhance prosperity, energy, security, and sustainable development. With some 121 countries appreciating the idea of the alliance, 60 have agreed to the treaty, with some 24, including Ghana, having assented and ratified it to ensure that they use solar energy across the world. The first Founders Conference of the Alliance, the largest congregation, attracted some 90 countries from all over the world. The summit was aimed at paving the way for innovation and aggregation in the solar sector whilst encouraging strong partnership to mobilize more than $1,000 trillion for investment towards capacity building measures, policy innovation and projects by year 2030. French President and founding leader Emmanuel Macron called for renewed commitment to achieve the set target of the alliance. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who is the force behind the alliance, reiterated India's unflinching resolve to support the initiative to meet its target. President Kufado said Ghana has resolved to ensure the generation of renewable energy to enhance development. We've just demonstrated our commitment under the Paris Agreement to lower unconditionally our greenhouse gas emissions by 15% by 2030. The measure of our attachment to the Paris Agreement lies in the fact that the former president of Ghana, His Excellency John Ajakum Kufo, was one of its co-sponsors. The summit also saw the symbolic lighting launch of the alliance to signify members' commitment to making solar energy the power of the future. 
In other news, government has refuted claims that traders and squatters around the president's private residence were given only a week's notice to relocate. A statement signed by the Information Minister Mustafa Hamid said the traders, artisans and squatters were given six weeks' notice by national security. Adding, drivers at a taxi rank in front of the president's residence voluntarily relocated. According to Mustafa Hamid, compensations paid for the relocation of workers around the president's home came from the president's personal resources and not from the state. Now, the national security is continuing with the engagement process in order to ensure that their movement is done in a manner that accommodates the welfare of citizens of Ghana. That is what the statement read. Don't forget that you can always get interactive with us via our social media handles at TV3Ghana on Instagram and Twitter as well. We're also live on DSTV channel number 279. On to some other stories. The Forestry Commission of Ghana is digitizing all its operations. According to the Deputy Chief Executive John Afrote, rather John Alote, there are these are to ensure efficiency, accuracy, and value for money and time. Now John Alote was addressing a forum in Accra. The forum was to evaluate and assess best practices among participatory countries in line with the fledged voluntary partnership agreement. This focus on the resource has imposed greater demands on the managers of the forest as well as forest-based businesses to demonstrate greater stewardship. The objective of this gathering is to contribute to the bigger objective of responsible forest stewardship through trade in timber. Other speakers stressed on the status, challenges and next step of the fledged voluntary partnership agreement process in Ghana, Liberia, Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire. Ghana saw the opportunity through the mechanism of the action plan to harness the collective will of all stakeholders in the forest sector to evolve and implement policies and strategies that will contribute more effectively to reducing illegalities in the sector and the forest degradation as a whole. Overview of timber sector in each of these countries and the requirements of buyers from China and the EU. The international forest and climate change regime should especially take into account the huge opportunities for substituting non-renewable construction materials and fossil energy with sustainable harvested wood products. ITTO is strongly committed to realizing this vision by working in partnership with the private sector. I believe we can make a difference. The forum also reviewed Ghana's wood tracking system public portal developed by Civic Response in conjunction with the Forestry Commission. The purpose of the portal is to enhance due diligence processes and demonstrate the transparency and credibility of the Ghana Legality Assurance Scheme. And the people of Abutia, traditional area in the Volta region, have threatened to reclaim the Kalakpa Game Production Reserve if government fails to safeguard it from wanton destruction and the killing of wildlife. The people again want the immediate relocation of communities living within the reserve. These concerns were raised after a two and a half hour tour of the reserve by newsmen. The newsmen, however, failed to cite a single game species during the tour. Kalakpa Game Reserve is a protected wildlife reserve established in 1975 with a primary aim of protecting wildlife species in the reserve. The 325 km square game reserve is located on the foothills of the Togo Mountains, stretching between Abutia and Adaklu traditional areas in the whole municipality. Among other animals in the typical Guinea savanna vegetation zone are a variety of buffaloes, antelopes, baboons, and smaller mammals. Others are red river hog, black diker, grey diker, and red flank diker, and a variety of monkeys, including the spot nose monkey and the black and white colobus. There are also small mammals and rodents like giant rat, grass cutter, crested porcupine and pingolins, as well as bird fauna species. Prior to the establishment of the reserve, the area used to be a spot hunting ground for expatriates, mainly Italians, Greeks and German residents in Ghana. The reserve also has a spectacular combination of forests on the hills and a long grass on the plains. 
Other sites useful for tourism attraction include the scenic beauty of the numerous hills, the Zito, Borasos Palm and Kandanga Hills, believed to be the ancestral home of the people of Abutia. Ironically, the Kalakpa Reserve is fast losing its natural resources to unacceptable practices like illegal logging and game poaching. This wanton destruction has led to near extinction of most of the game and wildlife. A three and a half hour tour of the reserve failed to spot a single wildlife and the people of the area say they are frustrated. We decide to appeal to the government if they can assist us so that the trees, these woods will be removed from the reserve. If you cannot control the reserve again, then to better give it for us to, to work on it as a community. Others blame the development on neglect and the failure of government to relocate communities out of the reserve. I'm talking a forest reserve. Who buy your forest? Even the forest and wildlife staff cared less about this reserve, which is being destroyed by bushfires. These have led to the extinction of all animal species. This is also affecting the tourism potential of the area. This is a note of caution to those who care that we can no longer wait for more of the destruction. They called for a pragmatic approach to restore and repopulate the reserve. Now, a 55-year-old junior high school Form 2 student, Elizabeth Amwa, has advised girls never to allow any condition to deny them or impede their quest for formal education. The Adobin Presby Junior High School student in the Adobin Isukuma Barakwa district in the central region has told TV3 she has chosen to go to school at 55 years to serve as a role model for others, especially girls. It was a bright sunny Tuesday and the occasion was the 61st Independence Day Parade for schools in the Sikuma Odobin Brakwa district of the central region. Among the students of Odobin Junior High School was 55-year-old Elizabeth Amwa, marching briskly and drawing applause from the gathering. Our curiosity was heightened, so we focused on Elizabeth, who was not perturbed about comments around her. Elizabeth Amwa immediately agreed to speak to us and said being educated is the best thing one can aim to achieve in life. Education is paramount and I decided to enroll at this age to serve as motivation for others, especially girls who are faced with challenges. But how does she feel being in class with her grand and great-grandchildren? I am okay with all in the school. Teachers also have time for me in class. The children give me a lot of respect and always spend time to help me do my work in class. Elizabeth Amwa got enrolled in the school at age 50 in class 3 and praised all her classmates for helping her through her dream. <laughs> My aim is to continue to senior high school. If I don't get anything at all, I will be comfortable beating an assembly woman for my area. Elia, Pennyman Foundation, a local organization concerned with education in the area, honored teachers and pupils for their hard work in the academic pursuits. Really, she needs to be encouraged to do more for herself. You're watching News 360. Well, News 360 returns shortly after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to News 360. It's now time for Mission, which is supported by Star Ghana with funding from the UK Aid Danida and the European Union. Let's do some health. And quality healthcare delivery in the Pandai and Salaga districts of the northern region is being hampered by poor roads. Now, Stanley Blue reports patients and pregnant women are the most affected. Bandai and Salaga are densely populated districts. Poverty is high. Farming is a major occupation, but done at the subsistence level. Access to health care is a challenge. Most communities in the districts have no health posts. 
Communities with cheap compounds are under-resourced. We don't have means which we we'll use to transport them. And sometimes the, the client too face a lot of problems with the means. The Kojoboni Community Health Post in the Kwandai District, for instance, serves more than six adjoining communities, but lacks basic health delivery equipment. Sometimes you plan to go to a community and you get to the sub-district level and there are no vaccines. When you call the district, no vaccines. The facility is understaffed and lacks sterilization equipment. This affects care for pregnant women. This delivery instruments I'm talking about, we have this sterilized instrument. And that one is, is the boiler. When you finish, you put it inside and you regulate it and it will boil and the instruments will be safe. So if we are able to get one here, it will help us. Emmanuel Tatablata is the district chief executive for Pandai. We lack most of the infrastructure and uh, that is where our problem lies. And it's very difficult to also even renew our health insurance because uh, we are still under Saraga. And this district uh, is so old such a way that we need to get our own facility. But I don't get it. As we speak, we don't even have a printer, we have nothing, and we have only one personnel that is working, a whole district. It makes our work very difficult for us. Kumdi is a suburb of Pandai. It has a clinic, but staff have abandoned posts during our visits. A pupil of the Kumdi DA Junior High School, who was rushed there unconscious, had no health worker to attend to her. For close to an hour, nobody showed up. Poor roads and non-availability of vehicles hindered her referral to other health facilities. Some staff, however, arrived later and diagnosed the pupil. The staff declined comments. The situation is not different at Salaga. Poor roads in the two districts also makes commuting and cutting of farm produce difficult. We need a road to be fixed. The community is not developed because of the poor nature of the roads here. Pregnant women suffer the most when using the road. This is the nature of almost all major roads in the Salaga and the Pandai districts of the northern region. Their poor states affect commuting, especially when transporting pregnant women and farm produce to other adjoining communities. Residents want government to commit resources to fix these roads so they could heave a sigh of relief. Stanley Niblewu, TV3 News, Salaga. From health, let's do some education. And some kindergarten pupils at the Kwatape Community Basic School in the Pandai District of the Northern Region come to school in very poor school clothes. Now, pupils also study under harsh conditions. It's a Monday morning at the Kwatape Community School. There is complete silence. Within a few minutes, pupils report and the day's activities begin. Pupils are poorly clothed. Most pupils are not in school uniforms, nor have footwear. Some kindergarten pupils are almost naked. The Kwatape Community School, located in the Tenglento Electoral Area, was established by a private individual to facilitate education in adjoining communities. Two classrooms accommodate class 1 to 5 pupils. Lessons are controlled by the weather. 
Those who come first get chair to sit on. We all have animals in our bedroom. You don't have chalk. You don't have anything to work with. So how do you run the school? That is, you, we the teachers, we can carry the students to farm. When they farm, they will get some money and they will use to buy chalk and they will continue teaching them in the school there. Teaching and learning materials are inadequate. Pupils write on the floor. <laughs> And they're using their hand to write on the floor. Or one day you get some paper to them, and then they'll be there, pencils and papers, and they'll be there. Tell them how to write, hold their hands, and then show them how to write one, two, three, or A, B, C, D. Or if the person can write his or her name, you can encourage the person to do what to write. Only two teachers were present out of four. Kindergarten people sit under a mango tree. Teachers rotate and it is a free for all when teachers are absent. Their situation reflects poverty in the area. Pupils attend school on empty stomach. The community is making efforts to get the school absorbed by government. This case assemble we will write the letter to them and then they said the letters have yet do what? Accept. So we are waiting to see if they will accept to uh, but first we wrote for our school to be honest to Tengle to DA primary and then they, we send to the education office and then but they have yet give us feedback. We are waiting to see. Parents are equally worried about the poor state of the school. But the district chief executive for Pandai, Emmanuel Atta Tatablata, holds a different view. I have been seeing uh, these children sitting on the floor and I asked one of the tutors that, oh, what is happening? They just say school is closed through. Why do you decide to open a school here and you don't go to the government school? We need to get to that community, talk to the opinion leaders and advise them as and when it's appropriate for what I pay to get a school. It is the responsibility of the government to build a structure for the community. The school you see right behind me is not the only educational facility in the Tungalento electoral area in the Pandai district. But for proximity, more than 100 pupils from six adjoining communities attend school here. And their challenges need urgent attention. Stanley Niblewu, TV3 News. We are marching for Ghana, always. We are marching for Ghana, the best of for Ghana. Well, that's a nice song there for the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nanado Dankwa Ekufuado. But that's how we wrap up Mission for tonight. It is proudly supported by Star Ghana with funding from Danida, the UK Aid and the European Union. Hello again, let's continue with some more news tonight. The New Horizon Special School has organized an event to help parents who have children with special needs to understand the difference in childhood developmental disabilities and how to manage them. It is estimated that 2 to 3% of Ghanaian population suffer from intellectual disabilities such as cerebral palsy and autism. The event created awareness and also helped parents to know the various delays in childhood development and when to seek help. Doctors say if parents report signs and symptoms, especially with delays in childhood development early enough, it will save most children from attracting such illness. Parents were advised not to hide their children with intellectual disabilities but seek medical help early enough in order to avoid terminal cases. Children suffering from Down syndrome in Ghana are often stigmatized and not integrated into society. Their education needs are also most of the times ignored. 
Dr. Mimbe Utibwedi said, it is important for parents to plan pregnancies to prevent prenatal infections for a better outcome of their pregnancies. She believes early diagnosis is key to prevent most problems associated to children with special needs. Something like um, fetal alcohol syndrome, which is um, part of the intellectual disabilities, is caused by uh, taking alcohol whilst pregnant. And any amount of alcohol can cause fetal alcohol syndrome. Having said that, there are other causes that cannot be prevented. But those that can be prevented, you should be able to do that. Nino Tedua, a clinical psychologist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, said promoting good mental health in the nation can go a long way to prevent some of these problems. Once having identified it, to be able to have the structures in place to deal with it. We promote good maternal health and good uh, general health in the country. Uh, it should go a long way to minimize some of these things. Founder of Break the Chain Foundation, Adwa Kunedwa Pia narrated her ordeal with a cerebral palsy child. So no one is ready to give birth to a snake or something. And, and, and if you see a snake, would you run away? So the stigma, it's what's making people hide in their children. But I would say that every parent should stand boldly behind their kids, irrespective of their challenges. Because you can have a normal child, and that child can become an armed robber, a drug addict. Are you going to hurt that child? She believes government should perhaps take a cue and draft a comprehensive policy to address problems associated with children with special needs. And to other stories, the upsurge in early sex and teenage pregnancy in the Brema Isikuma in the central region continues to be blamed on poverty uh, as a result of lack of employment. Now, girls in the Brema Isikuma told TV3's Peter Kwa Adato unashamedly that they are compelled to engage in sex for money in order to meet their needs. Early sex, teenage pregnancies and early parenting continues to be a rising problem which prevents young boys and girls from realizing their dreams and their full potential in developing countries including Ghana. This widespread social problem is reportedly worse in the Asikuma or Dobin Brakwa district of the central region. The district was ranked the highest in teenage pregnancy in the central region according to a 2014 Ministry of Health statistics. Another scary revelation is that children below the age of 10 actively engage in sex and are even using contraceptives in a bid to avoid early pregnancy. The underage girls blame their behavior on poverty and unemployment. When we are completing school, we don't have any job to do, so girls must follow the boys to give them money and sleep with us anyhow. Because of the amount of money is given for themselves, they engage themselves with us. And you see an eight girl giving birth on this issue, so we want the government to get us. But this is likely to change as the youth have come together with support from a Ghanaian group, Peniman Foundation, which is offering them a wide range of interventions. So bring the youth to a standard that they will not lack anything, bringing urban rural migration down for them to stay here and then work or have their own work when they complete secondary school. The group has acquired a 20 hectare land for cassava cultivation to serve as an employment avenue through agriculture. The foundation is also committed to establishing vocational training courses and training for its members towards self-reliance beside peer educational mechanisms. They called on government to speed up the implementation of the One District One Factory policy to fast-track employment generation. The One District One Factory come out. We do it all you get work to do so that we get some money so that we can set up our own business. You're on News 360 and we're taking a break right now. When we return, we'll bring you sports further down the line. We'll be hoping to speak to Phoebe Swill. Uh, she's, a, she's a journalist in Sierra Leone and uh, we are hoping that she'll bring us update on the elections in that country. Stay with us as we return shortly.
All right, so in international news, preliminary independent economic analysis has revealed that the 2018 Mobile World Congress would have contributed approximately 471 million euros and over 13,000 part-time jobs to the local economy of Barcelona, where the event was held. Now, the MWC 2018 ended with anticipation on what the next phase of technology, 5G, will bring. Alfred Okansi has more in the following report. More than 107,000 visitors from 205 countries and territories attended the 2018 Mobile World Congress, the mobile industry's premier event in Barcelona, Spain. Approximately 24% of attendees were female and an increase from 23% at Mobile World Congress 2017. More than 2,400 companies, including major brands such as Alibaba, BMW, Cisco, Dutch Telecom, Ericsson, Facebook, Formula One, Google, IBM, Intel, Mercedes-Benz, PwC, Samsung, Seat, SK Telecom, Toyota, Vodafone, and many more showcased cutting-edge products and services across 120,000 net square meters of exhibition and hospitality space at Fira Gran Via. It's hard to argue that there was any better phone at Mobile World Congress than Samsung's new flagship deal, the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. More than 3,500 international media and industry analysts attended the event to report on the many significant industry announcements made at the Congress. The Congress featured leading-edge demonstrations of technologies such as 5G, and artificial intelligence. What's this 5G powered vehicle? What's it all about? Basically, the vehicle will communicate with the other cars and with the like intersections, uh, traffic lights, uh, with the, also the smartphones. Uh, so the vehicle will be moving by itself. It's autonomous uh, driving. Uh, you just sit and enjoy the ride. That's it. The, the technology has been deployed already or you are now piloting? No, it's a pilot. It's a pilot. In the future, it will be deployed. Let's now go to Sierra Leone where general elections have been held since 7th of March. Sierra Leone's elections body, the National Electoral Commission, on Sunday released more official results with respect to the presidential polls of March 7th. This is the first time that the opposition SLPP has taken the lead since official results were first released by the Electoral Commission. At 75%, the ruling APC was leading with over 15,000 votes. The Electoral Commission Chair Mohamed Conte reassured Sierra, Leone's, Sierra Leoneans that everything is being done to safeguard the, the choice they've made on March 7. He also mentioned that vote recounts and investigations against some electoral officials are underway in some districts. And on the phone from Sierra Leone is Phoebe Swill. Phoebe is a journalist and she is speaking to TV3 at this moment. Phoebe, good evening and thank you for joining us. Yes, good evening. Right. Um, what can you tell us about the updates that have come in since yesterday? Interestingly, since yesterday, you know, yesterday um, two sets of announcements were made by NEC. The first 25% were APC was leading and then the second 25%, which totaled 50%, APC was still leading, but the gap was closing. So today, 75%, um, another 25% was announced, making it a total of 75%. So now, the opposition, SLPP, is leading with 848,438 votes, while the APC is with 833,519 votes. So there's a gap of 14,919, a gap that um, especially the APC did not see coming because uh, earlier on I had an, a, an engagement with the two parties. I was asking about a possible runoff, how prepared the two political parties are. And both parties seemed very optimistic that there wouldn't be a runoff and both of them would win. So it was quite interesting. One thing, I would win, hands down, no runoff. Another thing, the same thing. So the results that came in this afternoon announced by NEC, there would likely be a runoff because 
all these political parties put together with the scores that are coming in. And mind you, NEC needs a total of 55% of all the votes cast countrywide to determine a winner. And none of the parties would be able to secure a 55% of the votes because the new parties have amounts that people did not predict. Because in previous elections, all the smaller new parties did not get as much votes as these ones are getting. So it's making the process very tough. So there is a likelihood of a runoff because the possibility of one party getting 55% is really very slim. How are Sierra Leoneans feeling? Are they expecting a change? which area you're standing mm. because of of course those who are voting in APC are telling us they don't want to change those who are voting SLPP are saying they want to change those who are also voting other political parties are saying they want to change from both the APC and the SLPP and those two have been the major leading political parties in the history of Sierra Leone they've been the only two parties to govern the country and so far as the results have been coming in it's it, it quite Quiet. I just drove past the All People's Congress Party office a while ago, like a few minutes ago, and it's, it's quite a quiet affair. That I wouldn't say the same for SLPP because I didn't pass through that end. But for APC, it, it's a quiet atmosphere right now in that part. But so far, no jubilation is going on from either of the parties. They're all just quiet. I think everyone is looking forward to the remaining 25% of the results, which is very key because anything can happen. So everyone is looking forward to that and also looking forward to next to make a declaration on whether or not there would be a runoff. And mind you, only that institution, National Electoral Commission, has the authority to declare election results and if we would need a runoff. Right, Phoebe Swill, we are grateful for your report. She is the journalist correspondent there for TV3 in Sierra Leone, and we are grateful for that update. And she says a runoff is possible. Up next is entertainment news. So it's now time for some entertainment news brought to you by Vodafone and Fan Max. My name is Nana Quedrado. Now, coming up uh, this evening, new rap talent keep emerging by the day. TV3 Entertainment team caught up with one amazing rap talent who described himself as Osakrum's finest rapper. As part of helping promote up upcoming talent and uprising, you know, artists here in Ghana and beyond, I mean, we sought out to actually get to speak to some of them. Uh, good evening. Good evening, boss. Yeah, how are you? By the grace of God, everything is on the way like a pipeline. Yeah, that's everything is on the way like a pipeline. Which camp do you come from? Yes, bear my bias. Bear my bias. Uh, I'm the champui. You get a point. So the champ way, everybody passes the champ way to become successful. So I'm the way. So, so my fans are following that path to become successful. So I'm the, I, I, when I come to my world, it, it is only the champions which are there and I'm the leader. So I'm the champion, no doubt. I'm the king, no doubt. Okay. Who are some of the artists in Kumasi that you say are the best artists for you? Yes, yeah, strong man is good. And I can see Flo Ken is good. And we have uh, Kaboom is doing his best. Here, pay him a bar. A program with down pay him a bar. I say, Ka, Nepetrasa, Senka Rapia Hinia, Kamino Tunfo, Teko Koso Nana, my message Namwa. You are able to do something in English for us? Yeah, that's champion pay him a bar in the building. Steady, my rhyme. I am world hero. That's why I'm the king. That's why I'm the champion. That's why I'm firing or climbing to the top. Are you on social media? Yeah, I'm social. I'm on social media. Okay. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. If you go to, if you want to follow Bema Baon, if you want to get my tracks, I'm a champion. Bema best track. Yeah, just Bema Ba is B R I M A B. If we want your track, we should go to Twitter. Go to Twitter. Okay. Are you on Instagram? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, but for now I get problem with my Instagram. What's what's the problem you have on Instagram? Can it be solved? Okay, it's it's just it's it's just minor problem, but I'll solve it. If I solve it, I will let you know. Best thing, my fans. 
All right, so that was Berima, but we caught up with him yesterday uh, outside the studios of 3FM. Uh, but moving on to the next story, eight months after being signed on to the Xylophone record label, uh, the center seems not to be holding for entertainment company Xylophone Media and their signee Stone Boy. And of course, uh, yesterday, some untoward in in incident happened at the Champs Bar, and Usu Arai has filed this report. A giant artist like Stone Boy needs no introduction. A giant artist like Stone Boy is a household name in Ghana and beyond. And it was all bliss as Stone Boy joined the Xylophone family on June 15, 2017. <laughs> Eight months on, things seem to have fallen apart. The center can no longer hold for the two parties. So I sent my little brother to go into my car to bring me my clothes or something so I could change her or anything. They hit him in the, on the lips, took my car key, sat in the car to speed it up. If not for my bodyguards, my security, 